Hi friends, welcome back to week three, chapter three. This is your intro. Friendly reminder, like all other intros, this video is completely optional. Nothing on it will be examinable. However, if you would like to kind of ease into your week, which you probably will want to do, it's a, it's a bigger week, um, happy, happy to help you ease into it. Our agenda for today's video is we're going to talk a bit about the storm, stats from last week's uh, assignments that were due, we're going to talk a bit about the course design and the test this upcoming Friday, as well as unicorn wood. All right, let's get into it. The storm. Nova Scotians, East Coasters love our storms. Uh, this is most prevalent uh, the first time somebody asked me if I had my storm chips ready. Uh, being from out west, uh, we don't have uh, hurricanes. So this was quite new to me uh, six years ago, seven years ago when I came here, as it was likely quite new for many of you. So I ask you, how was your first Nova Scotian storm? Uh, for us, we lost power for a couple hours yesterday and we're really fortunate, came back on. Uh, however, we forgot to secure some of our outdoor um, furniture and we now have uh, an Adirondack chair that is in the lake. We had two that were in the lake, uh, but my husband went and got one um, out. We found it, it was at our neighbors. So where is the second one? I don't know, uh, but lesson learned. When people ask you, by the way, if you have your storm chips ready, storm chips, as I've learned, are not, <laughs> they're not like a special type of chips. They're just chips that you eat when the power goes out and you need something to eat because you're unable to heat up some stuff. So storm chips for me tend to be, uh, what are those, like those ridges, those like ruffles, ridges, ketchup, uh, or basically anything. I will eat any type of chip, especially in a storm. Okay, so make sure you have your storm chips ready and on hand. And I really hope that this storm was not um, bad for you um, or or anyone, really. Uh, the weather is, you know, something I often laugh about. It's something that I often uh, <laughs> mentally complain about. I don't like to be cold. Remember, I prefer beaches over mountains, warm beaches <laughs> over cold mountains. Uh, but I will tell you uh, that a decade ago, I had five and a half feet of water in my condo. Uh, it wiped out a considerable amount of my net worth that I was just building. I was 27. And because flooding is overland water uh, and it's an uninsurable event, or at least it was uh, in Alberta 10 years ago. So listen, I am empathetic. I am sympathetic. I am very thetic about all types uh, weather. It, it sucks, but like most things in life, if we can't, you know, try to look at things with a bit more positivity or take the positives out, I will tell you that of everybody who said, I'm really sorry for you, oh my gosh, that sucks, um, can I see it, <laughs> um, reference to a condo, one person said, in a year, you will be better off than you were the day before the storm. And I thought, you are crazy. Like, everything I own is under, like, it, there was five and a half feet of water in my condo. Like, I, I can't afford to replace everything. And yet, I had tools. I had an education. I have grit. I have determination. And I was able to use those. And was I tired? F yes. But was it worth it? Mm-hmm. And in less than a year, I was better off than I was before. So in many different ways, including knowing who's got your back during a storm. A storm, uh, an actual storm and a metaphorical storm. Okay. Again, hope hope you're doing well and hope you have your storm chips ready because uh, this is September in uh, Halifax. We're likely going to get some more opportunities to eat those chips. Stats. All right, so I have some stats, please. Okay, so I use stats to be transparent with you as learners. The last thing I want is you to think that grades go in a big block box and I shake around the box and then I pull out your grade. No, grades are largely reflective of effort um, and intensity, so focused intensity on your behalf as well as general interest. It's probably gonna be a better grade if you're generally interested. So I try to do my part with that. So 
friendly reminder, grades are not shared to be as a place for you to judge yourself or others. Um, you please use this as information. Please do not be happy if you exceeded the average or sad if you did not, but rather use it as information. Uh, if you struggled with something and 80% of the class also struggled, perhaps that's an indication that it was just difficult material. Uh, similarly, um, if everybody did well, it means, hey, kudos, you are on track. So keep doing what you're doing. It's information. It's not, again, something to be happy or sad about. Our, we had two assignments due last Friday, adaptive assignment um, one and two, and I'm happy to report that overall there was a really strong performance. So you'll see here oops, that um, we had out of our 178 students, 164 submitted. And of those who submitted, the average was just under 99%. So most students had 100 because, again, if you get over 80, it bumps up. And a few students um, had right, um, right around here, uh, which would have been about zero. Okay. Because, again, if you don't get 50, it rounds you down. If we look at our Chapter 2, which, again, we're due on the same day, this was very similar. We had slightly, let's see, uh, slightly fewer people complete it, 155 versus 164. And of those who completed it, 100%. And we had some people who did not. I think that's like a three or four. Okay. So what does this mean? Well, it means that effectively those who, who tried and got in were able to accomplish a score of 100%. And I'm not saying that those of you who got in and didn't get 100% didn't try. Um, but as is discussed on our discussion board, uh, this is a largely effort-based practice, and there's still another score. There's a performance score that kind of shows how prepared are you. So it's possible to get 100% as a grade and yet demonstrate, hey, you have a bit more work to do. So see where you are um, both on your actual grade as well as your performance-based grade and use that to study towards your mini test number one. And before I talk about your mini test one this upcoming Friday, I want to talk about the course design. So I had a few people email me um, either right before or right after the deadline for uh, the adaptive practice and ask for an extension. And the answer to that is no. And the reason for that is in your syllabus, you will see that there are going to be two. Let's just write this down because I want to be very emphatic about it. The course design is designed such that there are two dropped adaptive practice. So your lowest two grades get dropped. And so because of that, there are no extensions. The drops are there for any reason. They are there because you wake up and decide you don't want to do accounting that day. They are there in case you um, have a technical difficulty that you weren't able to resolve before the deadline. They are there if your family member comes to town or if you need to go see a family member. Uh, they're there if you hurt, you know, need to go seek medical attention. They are there uh, for whatever reason, um, including you forget. And that happens too. So because of that, uh, there are no extensions that are permitted. Uh, there's only kind of one in exception to that, and that that is there was an extended amount of time. And I mean, like, we're talking greater than half a day of the day of the deadline where, and I, I mean, like, a significant amount of time where the technology fails. And so if that happens, then we will consider as a professor group to extend. One of the things that university is here for is you know, self-management, time management, uh, learning different, how to work with different people in different objectives. And part of that, a large part of that, is doing the best you can in the time that's available. So there's never any blame or shame. I had a student last year who said, hey, I have a conflict with work. I'm not going to be able to do this assignment. I'm just letting you know because I don't want you to think that I don't respect your class, but I'm choosing not to do the assignment this week. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. You get to drop two. And I, I appreciate you telling me out of respect. Um, not necessary, but like, thank you so much. And yeah, absolutely. Go go work, go do your thing. And, um, you know, 
I'll, if you need some help getting back, back in the groove, um, myself or my team can, can help out. So do not worry. But that's, that's the reason why the course was designed the way it is. Uh, there is some flexibility. I don't want to go all back in my day, but back in my day during my undergrad, oh my gosh, I, I would have jumped for joy had something like this uh, been, been available because definitely some weeks I uh, just wasn't feeling it. And other weeks I had work and other weeks just life came up. All right, so moving along, we have a mini test this Friday. And so friendly reminder, it starts at sometime between 8 and 5. So you, it's 40 minutes in length. So if you start at 8.10, then you will have till 8.50 to complete it. If you start at noon, you will have until 12.40 to complete it. If you start at 4.30, you will have until 5 o'clock to complete it. That's because it ends at 5 o'clock. So it starts at 8 and ends at 5 p.m. So make sure you start before. Before what? Um, before, my gosh, 4.20 um, p.m. And if you have accommodations, uh, meaning you have a documented reason why you get extra time or different resources, then um, the accommodation center will email me and this will have already been arranged. But that means that if you need to, um, if you have more time, so say you receive, um, you know, some more time, make sure you factor that in because you'll have to be starting before four o'clock. It's a hard five for everyone. All right. And the good thing is here. Okay. I, I don't, I want you to be nervous enough that you care because I know that when I care, I'm nervous, but there's one drop mini test. So there's one drop mini test. So if you just come in and you have have issues and something goes wrong, it's okay. Your lowest one automatically gets dropped at the end of the course. Uh, there's also, I really heavily encourage you on Thursday, there'll be a practice mini test that gets released. There's also instructions that this week's news post will be um, directing you to read under the mini test. So there's information on how to do the mini test. There's practice mini test. And hey, if it really messes up, you got to drop one. Uh, some students, uh, it's been brought to my attention from the students that they have been writing, um, for me, they have been completing their adaptive, uh, adaptive assignments on their phones. Okay, cool, whatever. It works for you, it works for you. However, these mini tests, you will want to write on a laptop. You will want to use the full functionality as it is a time restricted, you know, it's a time constrained environment and you'll likely need to use most of the time and the full functionality of your keyboard. So please do practice and ideally practice on a laptop. That would be very, very good. Laptop, desktop, whatever your PC um, or your functionality, just make sure you practice like you're gonna uh, play on Friday. Calculator. So you're welcome to use whatever um, calculator you want uh, for the time being. However, at your final exam, there will be two options of calculators. One is a simple four function calculator. And the other is a more scientific calculator. I believe it is your econ calculator. I'll be posting a picture of this. Now under your final exam um, approved calculator so that you can maybe get it and do your mini tests to practice with it. That might be a good idea. All right, so last item on our agenda is unicorn, what? Okay, so here's where the participation comes in. And this participation isn't for any gift cards this week, but it is for some participation, some, uh, <laughs> what do I call them, like fake bonus marks, like just, it's for fun. A Last winter, I asked my cost management class to name that unicorn. And <laughs> um, and truthfully, I gave everybody two minutes at the start of class. And then we went around the room and we said, what did we name this unicorn? And I had two different sections. One class went very like, you know, very regal and very like respectable names. And then basically like the other class was like Mr. Fred or like Horn Face or, you know, like, it was funny, it was good vibes in both of them. So 
I have a question for you and it's twofold. One is, if you had to name this unicorn, what would you name it? And the second question is, why the heck do you think I started off class with asking students in cost management, and honestly, here in your class, why do you think I'm starting off class by asking you to name that unicorn? I'm interested to hear your answers. Type them down below in our discussion boards, however you'd like, and I look forward to, you know, talking about this and debriefing this next week. Until then, I hope you have a great enough time as possible um, reviewing the lectures, reading the textbook, and I wish you all the best in your preparation for the mini test this week that is on chapters one and two. All right, take care. Talk soon.